vector notation. Um, just before we start, just a reminder that there is a note shotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so for the introduction to today's video, um, I'm just going to pass you over to someone you may recognize. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh, yeah! Okay, so as Vector himself uh, mentioned, Vector is a mathematical term represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. So what I've given you here are a set of vectors. Each of these arrows has a direction. So you can see the arrow is pointing in a certain direction. And magnitude basically means size. So uh, they are all of different lengths, which means they have different magnitudes. Now, all we're going to do here is we're going to think about um, changes in x directions and y directions. Now, vectors are going to be given as column vectors. Um, now you'll have not, uh, you'll have seen these in translations. Um, basically, it gives us a change in the x direction, so how far to the right, and then followed by how far up. And so in this case, I've moved three places to the right, and I've moved five places up, and therefore I have a column vector of three, five. The first value tells me the uh, movement in the x direction and the second value shows me the movement in the right direction. Now we always must make sure that we begin at the start of the arrow and end at the end of the arrow. So in our second one, the start of the arrow is actually here. And so as we move, we're going to go in the x direction first. So that is one, two, three, four, five but it is negative five because we've gone to the left and then we're going down one. And so that is also negative because it is a downwards movement. And so our column vector, negative five, negative one. For our third arrow, if we start at the start, we are here. And if we follow the arrow, we move six spaces to the left. Now that is a negative movement. But to get to the end, I haven't actually moved up or down. I've stayed exactly the same. And therefore, that is a y direction movement of zero, giving us negative six, zero. Continuing from the start here, we need to move one, two, three, four, five places to the left. So that is negative five. But then we need to move up two. So that is positive. So we get negative five, two. For the fifth arrow, we have a starting point here, and we do not move left or right, so that is zero, but we do have to go four places up. Therefore, we have a vector of zero, four. And finally, from this point to this point, I'm going to move, first of all, four places to the right, that is positive, but then two places down, that is negative. And so my vector is going to be four, negative two. So within this, uh, we're actually looking at the different representations of vectors. So we've seen how we can turn a, an arrow, a diagram version into a vector, into a column vector. Well, now we want to do the opposite. We want to take a column vector and show it as a diagram. And what this needs is, um, first of all, I will just point out um, in terms of the notation here, you'll notice that the letters are in bold. A bold letter is a way of showing that we are dealing with a vector. You may also see sometimes um, the letter underlined to show that it's a vector. Um, and also sometimes another piece of notation may be that we use a little arrow above a pair of letters. Now this would mean that we were starting at point A, moving to point B, and that's why the arrow is pointing between A to B. But in this case, we're just talking about individual vectors, and this one, A, is two, five. So we just need to start, uh, choose a starting point. Here it is. 
um, and then we need to follow what the vector is telling us. So 2, 5 would mean that I need to move two places to the right. 5 would mean five places up. And so I can draw my two points and join them together with a straight line. We also need to add an arrow to just to note which direction we're actually moving. And so in this case, we started here and ended here. So my arrow should point upwards. For B, it is negative three, two. So again, I'm just going to choose a starting point here. And negative three would mean I would want to go three places to the left. One, two, three. And the two would mean two places up. One, two. And now we have to a starting point and an end point. This was our start, this was our end, so our arrow should point in that direction. C is negative two, negative one. So again, just choose a starting point. Negative two would mean two to the left, one, two, and negative one would mean down one. And there we go. Join together our start point to our end point and draw an arrow in the direction that it is pointing. And finally, D equals zero, negative three. So again, choose yourself a starting point. Zero would mean no places to the left or right. We're going to stay in the same position. Negative three would mean three down. And so there we go. Our arrow from our starting point to our end point and draw in an arrow. So now we're going to look at a few things that we can do with vectors. Um, now vectors are spec uh, specified directions and magnitudes, but we can add together vectors. We can multiply vectors. We can even take negative versions of vectors. Um, and so we're just going to look at how we would go about doing that. So in the first, uh, first question, we have a plus b. Now that is vector a, 1, 3, plus vector b, negative 2, negative 1. So what we're going to do here is we're going to draw the vectors and see what the result would be. So our first vector is 1, 3. And so I'm going to choose a starting point here. And 1, 3 would mean 1 to the right and 3 up here. So we can join that together. And there is vector A. But if I add B, then what that means is I need to now start at the end of vector A and do vector B. So vector B was negative 2, so that will be 2 to the left and 1 down. And there it is. So let's join that with an arrow and a direction of travel. Now, the result of this vector, um, of this addition of vectors, is actually how we could have just moved straight from the starting point to the end point. So how we would describe this vector that is in green. And that vector, well, that is one place to the left and two up. And so the resultant vector would be negative one, two. Now, is there a relationship with what we have originally? Well, if we look at the x direction, we had positive 1 and negative 2. Positive 1, take away 2, is negative 1. 3, take away 1, is 2. This is literally the addition of the x values and the y values. Negative b is our next one. Now, First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the journey of B. So B would be negative 2, 1, uh, negative 1. And it would look like that. And so we would join it together with a straight line. But this is negative B. Now, negatives always mean the opposite. We are reversing something. And so this journey, the original journey for B, would have taken us in this direction from the top to the bottom but because this is a reversal 
a negative version, what we're actually doing is pointing in the other direction. And so what would that be as a column vector? Well, that means I've gone two places to the right, which is positive, and one place up, which is positive. And what we've ended up with is the negative version of B. Negative two has become positive two, negative one has become positive one. In the next part, we are looking at 2a. Now, this is known as a scalar multiple. We are multiplying by a scalar quantity, just a value that is multiplying the vector together. But I'll show you how this comes about. First of all, I'm just going to draw a. a was 1 to the right and 3 up. Now, this is 2a. So all I'm going to do is with this vector, I'm going to do it again. So one right, three up, one right, three up. It will bring me to here. And so I can now join that as a single vector. It's taking me along this line. And if I wanted to know what that was in total, well, from the starting point, to the end point, that's gone two places to the right, and it's gone six places up. And if we have a look, the original vector was one, three. Well, I have doubled the x value. One times two is two, and I've doubled the y value. Three times two is six. Okay, and so then finally, negative three a. Well, let's begin with what a would look like. So a is 1, 3. So 1 to the right and 3 up. Now, ignoring the negative to start with, I want to go just with the 3a, which means I need to do this three times. So that is 1, 3, 1, 3. So I've done the, uh, done the vector three times to create 3a. Now, 3a would be starting here and ending here here but because now it is a negative that means we need to reverse the direction of travel and so we're actually going to turn it to be facing downwards now again if i wanted to get a column vector for that that would be two three places to the left so negative three and three six nine spaces down, negative nine. How could I have gotten that straight away? Well, if I take the original vector of one, three and multiply it by negative three, one times negative three is negative three. Three times negative three is negative nine. So now we're going to try and do um, some of these without actually using um, the diagrams. Can we just use the numbers that we've been provided in the column vectors in order to solve the problem? So in the first one we are asked for 2a plus b. So the first thing that we need to think about is that we need two lots of a. And so it's two lots of the vector 1, 3. And so that just means multiply the x and the y by 2. So I'm going to have 2, 6. We then need to add b. So we need to add on the values for b. So next I'm going to have 2, 6. That is our 2a. And I'm going to add negative 2, negative 1. Now all we need to do here is actually just work with the x values first and then the y values. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. 6 plus negative 1 is 5. And so the resultant vector, the result of combining 2a and b, would be 0, 5. If I was going to do a take away b, well that would mean I need a, which is 1, 3, and I need to subtract b which is negative 2, negative 1. 
And if I do the subtraction in the same way, deal with the x values first. 1, take away negative 2. Now, this is subtracting a negative, which is the same as adding. So 1 plus 2 will be 3. 3, take away negative 1. So again, double negative means we're going to add 3 plus 1 is 4. And so the resultant vector will be 3, 4. 3a plus 2b. So again, we need three lots of this value, which means this a vector needs to be multiplied by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So that is 3a. We need to add 2b. So two lots of everything that's in here. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. If I add those together, I'm going to just deal with the x's first. 3 plus negative 4, so that's the same as taking away 4, so that is negative 1. And 9 plus negative 2, so it's 9 take away 2, 7. And finally, 2a take away 2b. Well, 2a is going to be 2 lots of this, so double the top and double the bottom. And we're going to take away 2 lots of b, so we're going to need to double everything here. So that will be negative 4 and negative 2. We are subtracting, so let's deal with the x's. 2 take away negative 4, so that's the same as adding 2 plus 4 is 6 and 6 take away negative 2 the same as adding so 8 our resultant vector 6 8 and so we end with our exam question it came from the edexcel paper in june 2018 and it was on foundation paper 1 um, and we've been given that a is the vector 5 2 b is the vector negative 1 7 so work out 2a plus b as a column vector so the first thing we need to deal with here is that it wants 2a. So all I'm going to write down is what 2a would be. It would be double of vector a. So that is going to be 10, 4. If I'm going to add 2a to b, then I need to do 10, 4, plus the vector b, negative 1, 7. And all I'm going to do, like we did in the previous examples, deal with the x's first. So 10 plus negative 1. Well, 10 plus negative 1 is the same as taking away. So that is 9. And 4 plus 7 is 11. Our column vector would be 9, 11.